All right, so let's do another example of graphing a linear equation where we need to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept first. So here's what we know about every x-intercept. Every x-intercept is going to be something, comma, zero, and for every y-intercept it's going to be zero, comma, some number, right? So if y is zero, we kind of cover this up, and we see that x is equal to negative eight, right? That's already done for us. We don't need to solve for x. So x is negative eight. So negative eight comma zero. And then for the y-intercept, if x is zero, we just kind of cover this guy up, and we see we have the equation negative two y equals negative eight. Divide both sides by negative two, and y is equal to positive four. So there is your y-intercept. So this is enough information for us to go ahead and graph the line. The x-intercept is negative eight zero, and the y-intercept is zero four. So we can use the slope to get more points, and let's do that. When we try to calculate the slope, the slope here is going to be rise over run. And so from here to here, I am going up four and over eight, which reduces to a fraction of one half. So from here, up one over two, up one over two, and so on, and I'm gonna land back at that y-intercept. So I feel pretty good about the slope that I calculated. Keep doing that, up one over two, until you get to the uh, edge and you run out of room. All right, so now we just need to connect the dots. And we've got our line, just like this. And so what we're saying is that any point on here should be a solution to the original equation. Uh, not only that, but just like we did in the last example, let's take this and let's solve this for y so that we can confirm that the slope and the y-intercept that we came up with is still going to be true if we did it another way. So here, what you would do is uh, subtract x on both sides. So you'd have negative 2y equals negative x minus 8. And then we divide everything here by negative 2. And in doing so, we get y by itself. This is a negative 1x over negative 2. So it becomes a positive 1 half x. Negative 8 over negative 2 is a positive 4. So the positive 4 matches up with the y-intercept that we had. And that 1 half is the slope that we found just by using the intercepts from before. So yeah, I feel pretty good about this. Now let's look at the next example. So in the next example, we have y equals negative 3. Notice there's no x here, right? It's just y equals negative 3. If you were to try to complete a t-table of values for this guy, you're going to find out that it doesn't matter what you pick for x. If x is 0, what does this say? y equals negative 3. If x is 2, this says y equals negative 3. If x equals 5, y still equals negative 3. Right? It doesn't matter what x is because there's no place for x. All you have is that y equals negative 3. And so when you plot this, we have 0, negative 3, 2, negative 3, and 5, negative 3. So we just have this. I know a lot of students want to say it's a straight line. Yes, because all lines are straight. But we have this horizontal line. And you'll notice that for each of these ordered pairs, so here we have 0, negative 3, 2, negative 3, and 5, negative 3. The key thing here is that every single y coordinate is negative 3. That's what this equation is saying. Now, if we were to identify the slope, remember that slope is rise over run. So pick any two points on here. As we mentioned before, no matter what two points you pick, the slope there is going to be the same slope for the entire line. So if I go from here to here, my rise is, well, I didn't go up at all. 
but I did run three units to the right. So my slope ends up being zero. So what we're gonna know here is that for every horizontal line, your slope is going to be zero. And we're gonna condense this here in a neat little thing for you to remember in just a moment. All right, so we have this. Now let's take a break and let's see what happens when we have just X and no Y. So see you after the break.